Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to The Crafty Corner. Today, we're going to be having some fun with an old favorite. I am pulling out the Ranger melting pot today, and we're going to be making some dimensional flowers using ultra-thick and some distress embossing glazes. If you'd like to see the full supply list, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. So today we're gonna to be having a bit of a blast from the past and we're gonna be pulling in two rather old Ranger products. We're going to be using some ultra thick. I have quite the stash of this, so it seemed like a great time to use some of it. And we're going to be using the melting pot. This is definitely a very old Ranger tool but there are still many techniques that can be used with it today. And back then, they mostly were using embossing powders and of course, ultra thick. But now we have a beautiful palette of distress glazes. And I'm gonna be using this to decorate flowers. I'm going to be using this to decorate some flowers. So we're just gonna take the lid off here. I've been preheating this for about 20 minutes to make sure it's completely up to temperature. And I have die cut some floral pieces. Here we have some tattered florals from one of the old Sizzix big dies. And we're gonna put this directly into the melting pot. Now, we're gonna take some of the ultra thick and I'm going to spoon some of that on and we're gonna let it melt. Once it's nice and melty, then we can start to get fancy. But first, we just wanna sprinkle this on and let the melting pot melt this out. And this could take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna pause right here and we'll be back once we have some melty action going on. Okay, so things are getting nice and melty. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take a little bit more of the ultra thick and spread that on here. I wanna make sure that we have a nice glossy surface because once we start adding the distress glazes, it is going to spread pretty quickly, but I wanna have a good foundation for the distress glazes to flow over, which is where the ultra thick comes in. Now, the first time I remember seeing ultra thick was on the old Tim Holtz DVD, and that was the, I think that was Vintage Travels, and it was, very intriguing and it was a faux dichrolic glass technique. But I found that this works just as well on paper and with the new distress glazes, ooh, we're gonna have some absolutely gorgeous color to play with. Okay, so for this first flower that I'm going to be doing, I want to do some blues and purples. So we're going to be pulling in some villainous potion wilted violet, seedless preserve, and I think a dash of chipped sapphire. So we'll be using these colors to add a beautiful tint to this flower. Now, the flower that we're doing is going to be done in four parts. So the base part here is going to actually be the lightest one and we're gonna work our way up towards a dark and then back to light. So all I'm doing is just opening the jar and sticking it off to the side here and we're going to sprinkle in just a little bit with the distress glaze and see how our coloring starts looking. So since we have that beautiful layer of ultra thick already down, the distress glaze is just melting out really quickly, which is great. And it doesn't take a lot to get that really, really pretty color. Now, you could distress glaze some plain white paper and then die cut a flower. You could do that, but it would be pretty one dimensional. The ultra thick is very, very cool because it mounds up and it can give you this multi-dimensional look. I did these flowers earlier in the week just as a test run. And as you can see, you get this really neat curvature on the petals and that gives it the really cool dimensional look. Okay, 
Now I want to add in a dash of the Villainous Potion. Let's see. I kind of want to add that around this part here. Ooh. That's really blending out nicely. I like that. Cool. And I want a little bit more of the Seedless Preserves over here. So I'll make sure that all the edges are getting some of that lovely color. And I'm just taking this little plasticky spoon and I'm just gently tapping the glaze on here. It's like we don't need to go overboard. We don't need to use like tablespoons of this. We just need little bits. And we just want to distribute that powder to get that really beautiful look. Okay, we're just about there. I'm just trying to cover up some of these white edges. That is looking so good. Okay. All right. Now I'm really happy with the flower. So this is hot. It is called the melting pot for a reason. So to get this lovely flower out of here, I have the Sizzix squeezers. And I'm just going to take a point on that flower and we're just going to lift that right out of the melting pot. As you can see, we've got some beautiful dimension going on here. Oh, I do need to leave that a little bit longer. I see that I have a little bit of powder that has not melted. But when we're completely melted out, then I can take the squeezers and lift this out because I do not want to go in there with my fingers. It's going to be really, really hot. Okay, just going to move this around. Now, one interesting thing I found with the melting pot, there are some hot spots and there are some cold spots in here. I think it has to do with where the filaments are hidden underneath. So sometimes you have to move your design. Sometimes you have to move your design around a little bit in order to find those perfect hot spots. All right, that's all melty melty. Ooh, so pretty. And I'm just gonna take this and set it off to the side. Good. Let's do another one together in real time. We're going to take this piece here. I'm gonna start with a layer of ultra thick. And with the ultra thick, I can be very generous. We want to build up that beautiful layer so that the glazes will just float across the surface. Okay. And as you can see, this is definitely melting reasonably fast. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this for the moment and we'll be back in a little bit as soon as this has melted out. Okay, we are all nice and melty again. So we're just zooming in to get a closer look at what we're doing. And I'm just kind of tapping in a little bit more ultra thick to fill in some of those little gaps. And then we can add some lovely color. All right. So for this layer, we're definitely darkening it up a bit, and I'm going to start with some lovely chipped sapphire. So again, we're just going to just tap that pretty lightly around the edges, let that spread. Mm. The ultra thick is just magical. It's like a carrier substance that allows the rest of our color pigments to just flow and meld. So, so pretty. Mm. Now, if you're saying to yourself, well, why are we using this antiquated old tool? Well, the thing is, a lot of people do have this in their stash, and I can tell you firsthand, I've checked eBay, and there are some of these still floating around out in the universe. So if this is a technique that you're interested in, do check out eBay. There are a few out there, and they are not astronomical as of now. I found this one about four years ago and I was able to scoop it for about 25 off eBay. And at the time there were literally at least a few hundred of these floating out in the universe. So I imagine there's still more there. I did check this morning and I did see at least five listings, maybe more. Okay, so now let's go in with some Villainous Potion. The other thing is, even when you have old tools, there are new products coming out on the market every day. And it's really interesting to see how some of these newer products react with some of these classic old ones because some of these things just didn't exist back then. And who knows what things can be discovered with the new things that we have today. Okay, that darkened a little bit more than I wanted it to. So I'm gonna go in with some ultra thick and see if I can't thin that out just a little bit. Might not, might work. Oh, ooh, what is it doing? Okay, that is 
neat. I can use the ultra thick as a thinner. Oh, and look at the patterns that created. That is just, wow, too cool. I mean, that makes sense. It is a clear powder and it's diluting a tinted powder. So yeah, I, that makes sense. But still, that's so cool. That's It's kind of, I don't know, maybe like a boutique look. All right, I'm saving my progress. I love that. I'm just going to pull this out. Oh, look at that. That is just too cool. All right, I'm going to find a spot to set this one down. We'll let that dry. Now, the time it takes for these to settle is, well, that's going to depend on the environment that you're in. It could easily take two minutes if you've got the AC going. It could take longer if you're in a warmer climate, but either way, I'd estimate give it 10 minutes to let it cool before you start touching and trying to glue pieces together. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this on fast forward as I finish up this flower. And then off to the side, I have got a whole bunch of pieces and we're going to have a creative play and create as many different flower varieties as we can using the full palette of the Distress Glazes. Now, before we switch over, one thing that's definitely a very good question. If we're changing color families, what do we do with the melting pot? It's got gunk in it. How do we clean it? Well. I will show you. Cleaning is very simple. All we need is some paper towel. We fold it over a couple of times, turn this off, and we just have to swipe. And if we double layer up, we're not even gonna notice the heat. We just go around, we swipe it, while everything is still nice and melty melty, and that's it. Melting plot, all set for a new color, or to simply put away. But we're gonna turn that back on because we have got more flowers to create. All right, let's go ahead and put this part on fast forward. Now that we have all of our flowers made, it is time to start assembling these. So what we have here, this is the large big sty tattered florals, and we're going to stack these. Now when stacking them, you have got lots of choice. There are several ways to stack them, but I like to work from largest to smallest. And if I have one of these jaggedy flowers, I really like that to be my second layer because then you get this really cool offset. Okay, so nothing fancy, just taking some collage medium, adding that to the back of the flower and just sticking that on here. I might need to hold that for a moment or two, but so nothing fancy. We're just going to put this layer down and I might have to hold this in place for a little bit but this is going to give us a great start to stacking our layers. Now we'll just take this third piece over here. Again, we'll need some more collage medium and we can stick that down. That will be the next layer. Then I've got two more little layers here. Just flip these over. Take that, add the collage medium. Good. And again, we'll just stick that right on here. And now for that final little layer. In this case, these pieces are pretty thick. I probably should have gone the hot glue route with these, but that's okay. I'm just gonna set this aside and stick something heavy on it so that everything is going to stay in place while it dries. 
Okay, so we have a few sets of other flowers that we put together. So we've got a couple of sets of flowers here that we are also going to stack together. All right, so we've got a pink set and a blue set. And then I've got the little centerpieces. Okay, so again, just adding a little bit of glue onto one flower, stacking the next flower, and so forth. I love how easy these are to stack up, and if you don't like this particular configuration, it's really easy to change this and mix and match for other patterns. These flowers are from the Tiny Tattered Floral set, and there's a lot of different choices for flower combinations. Okay. So we've got the basic stack. Now I want to do the centers, but I'm not just gonna use these little yellow centers. I decided that it would be fun to add a little bit more texture to this. And off to the side, I have got a stash of yellow seed beads. I thought it'd just be interesting to give a little bit more texture here. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue and we're gonna take a small pinch of seed beads and just sprinkle that right on here and I'll just Give a little bit more visual interest. There we go. Just move that on there. Good. I've got two little beads that need a spot. Okay. So that would be one of them. Set that off to the side. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue one. So just running those dots and adding a few of the beads. Okay. So the other flowers that we have left are all single blossoms and those we're going to add a dash of glue to them and then sprinkle on the seed bead decorations. And for that we'll go ahead and kick that on fast forward. So let's take a look at our final floral. This is perfect. And now we have all these beautiful little flowers with the beads for the centers. I am loving all of that beautiful shine, but we're gonna focus on that large floral piece. So we're gonna be building a card and I'm starting with some Sizzix cardstock. We have a lovely shade of lavender and we're bringing in Floral Outline CMS 430 to stamp a background using some silver embossing powder. So I've got my acrylic block here. We stuck the stamp down. Now we're just going to tap on some embossing ink and stamp out this image several times on this beautiful cardstock. Now I'm not looking for perfect outlines. We're just wanting a bit of texture to break up that solid color. So we're just gonna stamp, good firm pressure, and then we're gonna ink that right back up and we're gonna stamp that down again. So the embossing ink will stay wet for a bit of time. I'd give it at least three minutes and then we can add that beautiful embossing powder over the top. Now, the nice thing about this cardstock is that we can easily tell if the ink has successfully transferred from the stamp onto the paper. You can tell right away by those beautiful outlines that yes, we have got plenty of ink on our stamp. Okay, I think I only need to stamp one more time. Let's go ahead and add some more of that embossing ink. And in case you didn't catch it earlier, we are using the embossing dabber. That is a quick, easy method to apply our ink to our stamp. And there we go. We have our background all stamped out. So now I'm just gonna pull in a piece of scrap paper to catch all that extra embossing powder. I've got some fine silver Ranger embossing powder. We're just going to dump, tip, and tap. There we go. All set and ready to be embossed. Mm. This is gonna look great. So of course, after embossing with the Sizzix heat gun, we now have a beautiful floral silver background, but we're not done. We're gonna stack this. I've got some silver craft stock and I also have a layer of vellum that I embossed with some layered swirls. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with the ATG tape gun and we're just going to stick down a few strands of adhesive and then we're going to build our 
layered background on this card. For that vellum piece, I used the Sizzix embossing folder swirls. It's not one of the 3D folders, but it is a beautiful layered folder, which gives us some dimension. All right, so lining up that silver piece, sticking that right down. I love this. It is super shiny and reflective. Hey, we can even see the camera from here. All right, let's just move that a little bit, make sure everything is nice and square. That looks good. Perfect. Now, for the vellum piece, I am not using the ATG gun. I am using a little vellum tape runner. So we have this little green one. I think I got this at Simon Says Stamp. And it's specifically made for vellum. So this is going to be the perfect solution because otherwise some of that adhesive might show through the vellum. And this stuff is almost completely invisible when it's implied. So I'm just going to run that right on here. And then we can stick down this layer as well. As you can see, the tape consistency is pretty different from the ATG. Okay, one more strand. And we'll finish that off there. Good. And let's add that to the card front. So again, placing it down, trying to make sure our edges are looking really crisp. There we go. Ooh, okay. With the two layers of silver and the texture on here, I'm really happy with this. Now we get to bring in the main focal point of this project, which would be the beautiful dimensional flower that we made earlier using Ultra Thick and the Ranger melting pot. So a bit of collage medium, and we'll stick that down. Mm, the purples on here are just absolutely divine. Very happy. All right, now of course we need some embellishment, and here I'm pulling in some of the Ideology metallic drops, and that will add another layer of shine to the card. So we're just going to do the four corners. Well, I think I'm going to go for a kind of medium-sized drop today. So let's just pick through these and find our drops. There we go. That's one. And I think I've got the rest of these. It's hard to find some of the sizes. There are quite a few drops in this mess. All right. That gives us two. Now we just need to find two more for the other corners, then we'll be all set. So let's see here. There we go. That would give us number three. And looking for number four. Perfect. So the last thing we're going to need will be a sentiment. Now, we'll just dump the rest of those little pieces into their tin and search for the perfect sentiment to go with this card. So let's go with the metallic sticker book. This is by Ideology and Tim Holtz. And there we go. We now have our sentiment and our finished card. And that would be the journey is the destination. Thank you so much for joining me today at the Crafty Corner for some fun with distress glazes and the Ranger melting pot to create this fun dimensional card. I hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial. And until next time, happy crafting.